At the beginning of the semester, you get a syllabus with all of the different things that you need to try to do for a given course, and for multiple courses, because you have multiple syllabi, and it can get overwhelming. There's tasks that need to be done, which include readings and assignments and study. And over the years, I've been trying to find the best way to help myself navigate the combination of these things so that I stay on top of the deadlines. I'm studying well enough in advance. I'm not cramming at the last minute, so I'm not getting stressed. And I've gotten pretty good at it. I get good grades using the methods I've slowly been building up. And this term, I'm trying a new method that I feel quite confident about. So I wanted to capture myself setting up that method and then share it in case anybody else wants to give it a try too. I haven't done a full term using this exact method, but it's very similar to what I've been doing for the last two and a half, three years. And it's worked out well for me in the past. So I hope this is helpful. This is going to be a little bit, uh, different of a video. I'll, I'll give a little bit of a rundown of what I'm doing here, but I'm also going to leave in parts just sort of doing the thing itself on my screen, which I have here. And then I'm going to see if that could be another way to do something useful by kind of showing the details of me actually doing the thing. So let's give this a try. New format. I know that a lot of people do study with me's, which I have mixed feelings on because they can become kind of like a study porn kind of thing. But this is a planning with me, which hopefully doesn't become like a planning porn <laughs> kind of thing. But yeah, uh, planning with me. Let's see how this feels. Uh, hopefully good and productive and not just self-indulgent for you or for me. Hopefully it's useful. Let's do it. Maybe you'll plan using some of these methods too. So what I did to end up getting to here and I'll run through a live example of it in a sec. But what I did to get to here was I started from the calendar view. I had my syllabus open, mostly just to look at when the midterm and final was so that I can reverse engineer from there. But in addition to having a kind of bulk of extra dates right before the midterm and the final, I want to have a recurring kind of study date every week, one or two spots. And so what I did is I knew I had already built in my times when I had uh, actual classes or work shifts or volunteer shifts. And so then I was left with the, the gaps, the orange are my sort of synchronous live events that are non-negotiable. And then everything else is kind of fuzzy, like I, I can move things around with the rest of the time. And so I had these gaps where this task is now and this task and this task, and I filled those in. I then plotted out when the exam was so we can see there's Midterm one is coming up on October 5th, and I decided I wanted three sessions of additional study time on top of the regular weekly study time leading up to that. And so I reverse engineered that and I said, okay, in the 10 days leading up to that, so from around here, let's fit three of them in. So I saw this big gap here, so I fit in one there, and then I managed to fit one in there. The reason why I'm telling you this is because I want to get across the point that part of what's cool about Tick Tick and the digital time block planning is I did this in the calendar view. So I had this kind of visualization of where the spots are and I've pre-planned the tasks and then I can flip back over into task view. And these are what I've ended up moving into discrete pre-scheduled here. So these are those booster sessions for midterm one, study booster sessions, one, two, and three. Initially, when I added them, everything propagates into this first column, and then you just got to move them over. So this is after I've organized it. Again, I'll run through an example of doing this live, but just wanted to give you a heads up of how we get to this kind of view. And again, you can add more sections, you can rename these. I've also gotten these sorted by time. If you just put custom, this is sort of what it was before that. The time is useful to me, but there's options. When it comes to my weekly readings, Something I'm trying to embrace more fully this term is setting up recurring times for each course's readings rather than discreetly planning out each reading. So say I, I have two readings, say two journal articles for this Psych 315 course for this week, rather than saying read BEM 2003, read Nozick 2004, I just put in a recurring thing of do the readings for that course. Part of why I'm trying this is based on the suggestion that Cal had, which was to just get used to at a certain day and time and space during your week for any given term, try to condition yourself to getting used to, okay, Fridays uh, at noon, I'm gonna, at 12.30, I'm gonna do the first half of my reading for that week for this course. And then you can just go check the syllabus for what exactly you need to read. This cuts down on the work of entering different journal article names and such in here, which I've done in the past, and I didn't find much more helpful than just setting aside the time and grabbing the article as I needed it. 
It also helps, again, by taking advantage of that conditioning, getting you used to being in the mode to do that type of reading. The part that helps with the conditioning is doing the reading at the same time each week. So again, by entering those there, I got them propagated in uh, initially here, and then I moved them to this recurring pre-scheduled. You can see here, I've put sort of a start next week's reading and finish next week's reading for each one of those. Another thing that helped me initially figure out the times during which I would put in these kind of recurring study sessions and these booster sessions is, like I said, starting with the synchronous meetings and those kind of blocking out some time to begin with that I have to work around, and then also kind of deciding roughly what my work hours are. It's kind of organically gotten to the point where I know that I end up working roughly between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., not every single day, some days less than that, but I try not to do work after that is more so the thing. And so um, I know that I'm, I'm trying to fit stuff in sort of in that window. I'm not going to like say, okay, oh, I really need to study. I guess I'll do it at 10 o'clock on a Wednesday. Uh, that's fine. If that work works for you, I like getting up earlier and going to bed relatively early. And then as you can see, I've called this discrete pre-scheduled tasks. This is mostly just studying sessions, but it's stuff that I can anticipate far enough in advance and block off time for, because I know it's coming up, even though it's not exactly recurring. Other than studying, the only thing I have here is a lecture that I decided I'm going to watch asynchronously, just watch the recording back since I have the option for this class and I have another meeting that might need to happen then. And then I, I need to remember to check when the final exam is going to be for this course because they don't release that until later. It's not super important that I put those two tasks in here. I could have left them in specific tasks, but yeah, if there's things like that for you that you want to plan out in advance and would rather differentiate them like I've tried doing here, you could do that too. You could also just have the specific tasks and recurring or recurring and non-recurring. The exact categories I've used here aren't what's important. It's more the kind of division so that you know at any given time the information that you need is all there, but then also you can subset it and just have the part that's most useful to you in any given instance. And then something else that I've been doing uh, for quite a few years and that I find helpful is to have another calendar that I call hard deadlines uh, and I keep that one red. And so that would be for things like actual midterms or real deadlines for things I have to submit, like the scholarship I wanna submit for. It's due on that day, this is the ad drop deadline, uh, but most importantly, midterms and things like that. That's something that is definitely happening then. I could use the synchronous calendar, but the red, uh, which is I have an orange, but the red helps me be like, oh, that's, that's a big thing that's important. And then uh, another calendar I use here uh, is soft deadlines, um, which this is the video that we're sort of working on right now. I might end up calling it something else. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, the point is that Soft deadlines is for stuff where like, it's not the end of the world if I have to move this around, but it still helps to have it in the calendar so that I'm anticipating it a little ways in advance. Because when I'm anticipating it, I can reverse engineer and see kind of two weeks ahead that, okay, it's coming up. I need to do a certain amount of work in order to meet that deadline. And to the extent that I want to meet that deadline, I'm going to have to accommodate other things to make that work. So that's the method. Now I'm going to show you an example of doing this for another course that I have coming up here, which right now is empty. I haven't planned for it yet. I'm a week and a half into the term. I feel a little bit uneasy that I haven't planned for it yet, but it's early enough that that's fine. You know, there's some wiggle room, the beginning of the course, the beginning of the term rather, there isn't really that much that you have to do. You're getting oriented, your schedules are in flux, yada, yada, yada. I'm just making excuses. Sometimes I've done this sooner, but I haven't done this for this course yet. So now I'm gonna set up for another course and do that live so you can see a little bit of what that looks like. So this is gonna be for Philosophy 375. Let's look at next week, because I've done the readings ahead a little bit. Um, I feel like there's gonna be something there the following. Yeah, so sometimes there's something there, so that's not so good. Maybe I can do it a little bit later in the day. Maybe Wednesday, um, yeah. So, full 375, I'm gonna put it in the name plus assign it to the task, just so when I look at it from the calendar view, I can see which course this is for. I'm gonna capitalize that. So, fill 375. Start reading. I'm gonna use the shortcut to call that. And I'm gonna click here, uh, get rid of this on time because I don't like getting the notifications about these kind of recurring tasks and switch the repeat to weekly. So there you go. 
So I've added the start reading there. And now as an example, I'm going to show adding a, a discrete task. So going to the syllabus here, you can see that the essay is due on November 4th. So I'm going to pull up my calendar itself, go to November, November 4th. I'm going to say L375 essay. I'm going to add that to my hard deadlines. There we go. Now I'm going to have to reverse engineer from that, making sure that I add enough tasks for different drafts and revisions of that in advance so that it's done by then. I need to do some drafts. Let's say four drafts uh, because of draft four by John McPhee. <laughs> so I have this essay due in the fourth. I can do finish finishing touches on it here. Let's say an hour and a half there. submit the actual essay here. So I'm going to add that as a task. Just so I don't forget. I so this is a little bit odd. What happened to my nice camera? It died. <laughs> well, not completely died, but the camera I have overheats pretty often. I've been trying to work against that during this video. It happened once and I managed to get a little bit more footage out of it, but I think it's done for the day. Basically what I'm doing is I'm picking deadlines or I'm plotting out the deadlines in advance rather, and then I'm reverse engineering the tasks from there, putting them into the calendar so that I actually put aside enough time for them. And then I'm taking advantage of some of the neat things in Tick Tick where you can switch back and forth between the calendar view and the task view. I find it very exciting. It's also just fun as somebody who likes software and productivity stuff on top of all of it. So I hope you do give it a try. If you're looking for a system, you want to try something new out for this term, I think it, it, it's a good way to set yourself up for success. You can also do something like this in another task management system by using that, plus a calendar app or even in a physical calendar. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you have a great day. Uh, like it if you liked it. Subscribe if you want. Uh, good luck with this term. Or if you're watching this at some other point or you're not a student, good luck with whatever you're trying to make happen that involves a bunch of logistics and stuff. Okay, bye-bye.